Can the power of the sun be harnessed to provide almost limitless energy? Well, that's what scientists from around the world are investigating here outside of Marseille, France, at the International Thermal Nuclear Energy Reactor Program, or ITER. Unlike our current nuclear power plants, which split atoms, nuclear fusion fuses atoms together to create power. Okay, why is fusion power special? Uh, virtually unlimited supply, uh, equitable distribution, safe, uh, it's what powers the sun. We know in a sense that it works, it's just a matter of making it work here. ITER is a tokamak machine and tokamak is a Russian acronym meaning toroidal chamber with a magnetic cage around it. So, and the magnetic cage is made up of 18 so-called toroidal field coils, big ear-shaped magnets. So we are just in front of the Tokama complex, actually, which is the building supporting the machine with uh, two, three main uh, functions. The Tokamak parts, actually, which is housing the, the building. The diagnostic building where all the equipment to control the plasma will be located. And then the tritium building where will operate the, um, the tritium plant. So we're looking right now at the heart of the facility where the power of the sun will be generated right here in this hole. Exactly. So you can figure out the location where the uh, tokamak machine will be installed. So this is called the pit, okay? the tokamak pit. So this area is surrounded by the bioshield wall which is at the bottom part thick of 3.25 meters. Okay? And actually, the machine itself, the tokamak machine, will rest on the concrete crown, the so-called concrete crown. My, my job is to heat, my, uh, heat the plasma via microwaves, and we have three different mechanisms to heat. Right now, you're standing in the neutral beam cell, and this will be a, basically a particle accelerator that will accelerate particles into the plasma, which is over here to my left, and it goes in, they accelerate it at one million volts. And so it's a, it's a, it's a basic, it's a huge particle accelerator injecting particles continuously to heat the plasma. In this area has a capacity of 50 megawatts of power. My system has a capacity of up to 40 megawatts. And if you compare that to your microwave oven, which is around one kilowatt, you're standing in the potential equivalent of 50,000 microwave ovens in this area. Uh, the eater approach is uh, not necessarily special, but it's the most advanced. It's what we know the most about, and it has the best performance that we know of. And so that's why it was chosen for the investment to go to this scale. So this building is used to actually generate the tritium that will one day, one day feed the tokamak to be able to create the fusion reaction. And this, and this plant runs, I mean, tritium is the essential fuel that this it, well, plant runs on. The plant will run on deuterium and tritium, which are right. isotopes, isotopes of hydrogen. It's just you throw in an extra neutron or two extra neutrons. And tritium, you find deuter deuterium in the ocean. So every, every gallon of water, there is every one millionth hydrogen atom is a deuterium atom. You take the deuterium atom, atom out of that water, you match it with tritium, and it gives you the equivalent of about 350 gallons of gasoline. You know, are you going to pave Arizona with solar panels? <laughs> I mean, this, this is the scale that you're going to need. It's, uh, it seems to me that's, uh, that's not very benign to, the, to nature either to, to cover a large territory with windmills and, and solar panels. We need that. We need that bridging technology now. It's clean. We should make use of it when we can. I'm not, not criticizing it. But in terms of driving the planet's energy needs, I just don't see that as being a solution that, that we want on that scale. I don't think people have looked at the, the sort of scale that you need to do those things at. How, how long do you think it will take before this actually is able to produce electricity 
as you know, in we, a have a, way. we have a very uh, precise schedule now for this project. We expect to assemble all the big components okay, coming from all over the world in such a way that we will be sure that the facility will work by 2025. We call it first plasma, the first demonstration that everything works as expected. After that, we will have what we call a stage approach in order to complement the installation in such a way it could work at full power. It will take 10 years more, 2035. It could look long, but for me, it is so complex that it is exactly what we need in order to move safely and with great chance to success. We're not limited, in my mind, by capability. We're limited by market pull. And who is going to invest in this? At this point, it's governments that are going to invest in it because uh, the capital cost for each unit is high. Uh, but the upside promise is so big, they're looking at it. Will ITER finish on schedule and make a significant step towards fusion power? Will fusion begin to attract private investment or continue to rely on government funding? These are the big questions facing nuclear fusion in its quest to harness the power of the sun and become a leading energy source propelling us into the future.